Hello and welcome to another Office Hours. Capsule. That's right. Capsule. <laughs> You're very important puppers. Very present pissers. Very neat pedestrians. You all rock. Thank you for coming and showing up and hanging out at us. I've, I've just been dancing for a very long time, so I apologize for this. But this is a small segment of my Office Hours live stream where we talk about um, specific, a very specific portion, like use like a news update or an ISC, um, and uh, part of a longer live stream. So this is recorded live, and I'd love for you to come over to, to watch us live on Thursdays at 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, to watch us hang out, hang out with chat and discuss and talk about some of the stuff. Uh, we cover the lore, lore updates, news updates, everything in between. So. With that all being said, make sure if you have been enjoying these, if you've been watching these in the past, uh, please do make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for more content like this, and also hit the bell icon to be notified when we go live on Thursdays. With that being said, let's jump into the ISC from, what is it? March 21st, 2024. Part of the non-combat stars. Cargo sits at the very heart of the non-combat star citizen experience, and as it continues to evolve in the upcoming Alpha 323 and beyond, its next major evolution is less about the places you'll go and more about the ones you'll start and come back to. Now, hangars, whether they're persistent, instanced, personal, or staging, make up the next frontier of cargo gameplay, and we went to Chad and his team for an early look at where they're going and how they're progressing. Let's find out more. So yeah, we've had a couple ISCs before to talk about the new cargo and hangars features coming. But now that we're here and about to release things, we want to talk a bit about how that impacts your play experience, even if you don't care at all about cargo. To and fro with cargo. I love the orange guy meta they've been going with. I like it. Very cool. Very cool. So let's start with persistent hangers. What are they and what does that mean? So a persistent hanger is an instance hanger that is going to be assigned to you whenever you select your home location when logging into the game for the first time for a patch. When that happens, what we do is we determine the largest ship that you have and then entitle to you a persistent hanger that's of the size needed to facilitate that ship. Yeah, that's whenever you cool. go into that hanger into the game, that hangar at your home location is always your hangar, and you'll be able to use it like your home. You'll be able to keep things in the hangar, you'll be able to leave things around, you can invite friends in, you can treat it like your own little Jimothy. oasis. One problem I have with that right off the bat, what happens if you purchase a larger ship in the game afterwards? Because if you, um, if you, if you purchase a larger ship, like say, say you start off with, a, with an Aurora and then you buy a Hercules. Now your persistent hangar is a Aurora sized, so you can't land your Hercules in it. Does it scale with the, uh, that's a good question. If, they, if they're doing an ISC, they usually have been doing the SCLs like a week after they go live. So if they talk with the cargo team, not this Friday, but next Friday, that would be something to definitely to ask is like, will it scale with in-game purchases as well? So let's talk about for these personal hangers. How do you actually get into them? Please proceed to sign back. You can make a request via ATC. You can tell that whoever's playing this is, um, uh, maybe they did it for the visuals, but it's like, that's, that's the old school method of requesting, <laughs> requesting landing. See for landing. And when we do that, we'll check to see if you have any personal hangers entitled to you, you'll be able to enter in using largely the same methodology that you do now, land, and then you can just hang out in there. As far as what can you actually do with your personal hangar and what kinds of things can you decorate with it, 
what we're going to do is allow you to call anything in your inventory up via that freight elevator. You can pick it up off the freight elevator either with your hands or using the tractor beam and just screw it about your location however you pick. Also in the hangars, you'll notice several new kiosks. We have the freight elevator kiosk, which has a brand new uh, UI and uh, inventory system to deal with uh, large volumes of cargo. You're going to have on the left-hand side a section that is showing the contents of the platform itself. And on the right-hand side, similar inventory layout with all your armor and weapons and items. And then you decide what you want to spawn in, um, in the freight elevator. The freight elevator then comes up and then you can start doing like loading and unloading of various cargo into your ship and so on. If you're considerate about how you're loading things and you're trying to optimize your loading times, it'll give you a lot of power as far as, for example, making sure that certain kinds of things are front loaded on the platform to make your multi-crew loading as streamlined as possible. And anything that's in your inventory, you're going to be able to call up. Some things you might have to put into an inventory container box. We're talking 8, 16, 24, even 32 SU size container boxes that you can put large items in. Now you can raise that up on the platform, including in collections, transfer that very quickly onto your ship, and then take them to another location. That's cool. Um, he said something back here before that, though. Inventory you're going to be able to call up. Things and you're trying to optimize your loading times. It'll give you a lot of power as far as, for example, making sure that certain kinds of things are front loaded on. Those are drugs. That's a lot of drugs. <laughs> uh, it means that Loadmaster is a legitimate gameplay uh, g gameplay um, uh, profession. So. I'm a little confused about that that UI though. That UI for the um for like the like the, the screen, like the the that that the the item kiosk. I kind of get it, but I, I'm guessing that the stuff on the right is more of your loose items and if you want to spawn them, they're going to have to spawn inside larger containers. That's something we're going to have to kind of wait for the game to see, but and kinds of things are front loaded up Talking 8, 16, 24, even 32 SU size container boxes that you can put large items in. Now you can raise that up on the platform, including in collections, transfer that very quickly onto your ship, and then take them to another location. In your personal hangar, you'll also have access to several other kiosks, starting with the item bank. Which are another form of kiosk, which you could almost consider like a small freight elevator in a way, in that yeah. you can retrieve personal items, such as clothing, armor, and weapons. Because the item that's being delivered will be delivered in a tray that's in the same machine. So you interact that kind of like you interact with a loot box and you get that out. So no other player can actually physically get anything from your local inventory. And uh, these item banks can be found not just within the hangars, but also the wider locations, such as your hubs and other key areas of a location to retrieve um, your personal items. Since you can't interact with, the, with your inventory anymore at any given time, it means like we need to have enough item banks around each location so you don't block each other um, from accessing an, an, a terminal, right? It's just a quicker way to get a quick gun or a few meta pins or your armor without having to load it up from the freight elevator. So I am going to assume that over time, these, these item banks are going to become more granular. So like you're, you'll have an item bank for a specific region of a planet or a specific area that you can store stuff in um, just because a it'll make more sense um, like logically and also it will prevent players from uh, glitching the system. Because one of the things that can easily happen is say you allow guns in um, in in like like they start doing like limiting access to guns inside certain cities like say certain landing zones but if you have the right permit you can bring it in so in theory you should be able to pull out anything from your inventory and without it being super like gamey where you can't pull out your gun because you know you're in an armistice zone you'll likely be able to access your guns 
So one of the easiest exploits is go to the item item kiosk in your uh, hangar, put it in the in the in the item kiosk, then go to your hab, pull it out of your item kiosk, or already inside the zone without being scanned, and you've just kind of created a loop. So I'm sure there'll be some things around it. Um, uh, <laughs> Jake Jake is rub rubbing me because of the. Uh, uh, because of, of an earlier conversation, uh, <laughs> but, um, so I could, I could see, see that kind of, that kind of being an issue. So I'm sure there's going to be some, some solutions down the line, but lore wise, I feel like this, this has got a very interesting lore behind it. Like, or it can be because, um, I can see something like this 100% existing because human beings are lazy as fuck. <laughs> We are super lazy. So the idea of, of having something that's just transferring items from back and forth across a certain area, it'd be like having a kiosk in front of you while you're sitting down on, a, on, on your couch watching TV and you're like, I want, I want the beer, but I don't want to get up. You push a button and the beer goes through the, uh, the pneumatic tubes and goes to you. That's something that someone would, exi would, would invent if they could <laughs> because human beings are lazy. Unless it's in a separate zone. Yeah, I, I feel like there's going to be some, some sort of stuff like that. And the last kiosk that I want to talk about is the ASOP terminal. Which we have positioned in the hangar, so you can request your ships from within the hangar and not just the spaceport. So they will still remain in the spaceport. So if you don't have a personal hangar in your location, you can request your ship also from there. What we're doing is we're changing the way that the ships spawn in the game. You can now request your ships from within the hangar and they will appear to you. But they won't just come out of thin air. What happens is the whole of the floor will open up. You get this like amazing view of the, of the hangar, the lights dim, the doors open. And the landing platform will be rising up towards you and your ship will be there. I called it. I called it. I called it. I, I, I called this. I, I, I said that this was going to be the, how they handled the persistent hangers like two years ago. Because uh, I said it was simple. It makes sense in Star, Star Citizens already kind of like how they've already designed stuff. And... Uh, uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy for this. This is actually really cool. I like this idea because it's super cinematic and I like it. We try to balance it in a way that it doesn't yeah. take too much. Yeah. How to show a new player. You're like, imagine this, you're a brand new player. You go into your hangar, you spawn your ship and you hear this, like the, the, like, and like the things are opening and like, like the little warning signs are flashing and you're just like, what the fuck is happening? And then up rises your Aurora from the depths. It's just like, oh man, that's cool. That's really cool. This is, yeah, this is 3.23 stuff. So time for you, but also that it feels like it has the right weight to it, but also you don't have to wait for it too long. So now you have a seamless transition and a realistic way of storing your ships away. Additionally, you can do clever things like call up a smaller vehicle, such as a ground vehicle, drive it off, and then call up a larger vehicle. Then you'll have access to your ground vehicles without having to go to another location. You'll be able to call up multiple ships and maybe have one person fly off with one ship, call another one, have another person in your party fly up with another ship. Or you can just call up a ship, change your mind, and then call up a different ship without having to leave or anything like that. It gives you a lot of flexibility. And I can already tell what some of you are thinking right now. We're not going to let the system like eat your body and store it into the inventory or anything like that. Uh, we'll make sure to account for that, such that if there's a blocking change that happens, We'll stop the process, go back up to the default state, and then tell the player about the issue so that they can account for it. If you do want to jump into the platform no, just Timothy. before it closes and fall to your death, <laughs> you can fall to your death if you want to. <laughs> so this is really cool, and we're really happy to get this in. It's been discussed for some years now, and it's been a very tricky thing to fit in and certain techs required 
to be able to do it. You'd be able to have this hangar in your own space and, and call your own ships and do a lot more within the hangar now. Now that we're adding all of this new facility to the hangars in the game, allowing them to be persistent, adding these freight elevators, adding the ship platform, there's a lot of more things that we have to have in these hangars for them to be useful for what we're adding. So the hangar sizes um, had to increase um, quite a bit. We did not want to do that originally in the beginning, but uh, soon when we did prototyping, we figured out that no, no, no. Clap it, clap it. Chat, that, I, need, I, need, I need you to clap right now. That is, I know they didn't want to do it, but they needed to so badly. So badly. Oh, it was so needed. Oh, thank you, CIG. Thank you. It's, it makes it so much easier to move around. Oh, there's so much more room for activities. Not all the hangars, as I'd like, the low tech hangars in particular are quite old by this point. Not all of them were to the same standards or metrics. So we figured that with the landing pad now going down, you had this gap for like quite some time before the, um, before the doors close. So there was a very narrow walkway for the player sometimes. So we had to rejig some things and made it actually larger. So the um, large and XL have had significant size changes. So the XL is about 20% larger yeah. and the large is about 30% larger. So certain ships that were a little tight can now fit a lot more easily. So you don't feel like your wings almost scratch the walls of it. So it feels a bit more natural and, and better to the play experience to land in your hangar now. The medium is the same, but taller. And the small has not been changed, but we re have classified ships to fit into the medium that were once classified as small. So hopefully a much better player experience than there has been before. And it's That's been good. interesting to take uh, the design of a elevator and the door uh, and extrapolate that across multiple sizes. So in some cases you can kind of widen out the door and use the same shapes. And in some cases you need to think really about how those shapes work. And sometimes they don't work within a small door, for example, when it did work in a much wider door. So we've had to play around with that and keep them looking consistent with each other, but also uh, adapt those shapes to work for each size. So this is an actualization of a long-term goal for this entire cargo career, to make the whole thing feel more real. It means that the whole experience is gonna allow for manual loading. It'll also feel more rewarding because it'll give you more interesting choices to make throughout the process. It'll make multi-crewing a more interesting and useful experience. It's going to just make the whole experience a more skill intensive and interesting and uh, tactile. Another thing that we've talked about is automated loading in the games. This allows you to still do commodity trading without needing to actually move the boxes yourself. It will be an option in the commodity terminal. Whenever you go and you pick the destination inventory, you'll be confronted with several options. One is the location inventory. The next will be all your ships that are at the location. If you choose a ship, you'll have the option to have it be automatically unloaded or loaded for you, of course, with an added cost. The ship has to be stored to allow for the transfer, and it will be time-locked while that transfer is occurring. Different locations in the game will have different amounts of time. Places that are more optimized for trade are going to allow for faster transfer. You'll be able to still do the trading. You just have to wait a little bit and pay a bit more money. So your profits won't be quite as good in that case. Once the automatic... I love this. I love every part of this. This is fantastic. This is amazing. Um, th th like... That A, well, 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 all of the people are like, but my, my automatic loading, you have it. But now it's a reason to choose manual loading because it's going to cost you money to do it. And the, the, the answer was like, I know a lot of people were hoping for like that, that NPCs would load your stuff. But with, with, with this, this new magical, fantastic, magical um, elevator system that, um, uh, that, that, that like lowers your ship down, um, Okay, so I'm, I'm going to explain something that's going to be really weird, chat. Okay, this is going to be really weird sounding. But 
there is a, there are automated bike storing systems. I saw one, there's one in Japan. I think there's in other places as well where you can like go in and put your bike onto, uh, into like this, this like machine and it will like lock your bike up into like a storage facility. But, um, so yeah, so, so that's really cool. Like that's what I'm imagining in lore that they have is when your ship goes down to be stored, it, uh, it goes into this gigantic, like, like, it looks like the Matrix, where, like, the, the ships are just being, like, carted off to these local areas. <laughs> like Carvana, yeah, like a gigantic Carvana for ships. I love it. It's ridiculous, and I love it. Loading process is finished. You can just go to the ASOP terminal in the hangar, access it, raise it, and go off, and you're on your way. If you care about cargo, this is going to be transformational. But even if you're not interested in cargo at all, it's still a foundational change for the game that fundamentally changes principles about inventory, physicality, and your play experience. The work's ongoing. We're nearly there. I think the team's done a great job on this. It's been tricky to get it working as it should be. It's a big milestone for the game that's been years in the making and coming. While I'm here to talk about it today, there's been a large number of teams across the entire company that have helped. Everybody from art, animation, VFX, through to all of the gameplay teams, engine teams. We've had a huge effort from Austin, Montreal, Los Angeles, Frankfurt, Manchester. It's been a big endeavor. So I want to thank everyone that's been helping to see this vision through. And I'm really looking forward to getting this into your hands so that you can play with it. You left Pico. So what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that the days of big ships scraping by the edges of player hangers are almost behind us. That you'll soon be able to spawn your ships and have them rise up directly into these newly expanded hangers and that the freight elevators and item banks within will herald a new future of physicalized cargo loading that should have long-reaching ramifications for life in the verse. And of course, while everything you see on ISC is always an early work in progress, because of the dramatic and far-reaching effects these systems will have on all life in the verse, you can expect this work will continue to iterate and evolve from what you've just seen between now and its upcoming targeted release in Alpha 323. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee, Thanks for letting us share the process of game development with you, and we'll see you all here next week. All right, before he does this the th thing he wants, um, let's talk about this a little bit. I, I like this. This is probably one of my favorite ISCs. I am also biased because 100% uh, cargo is the gameplay I'm most interested in. But there are so many good things with this. The item kiosk is a great solution to the problem of convenience. I do think that it's going to be um, uh, uh, I think I do think that it's going to probably be workshopped and kind of revised and tweaked and manipulated to the point where it can work properly. Um, but for now, it's good addition. It's 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 kind of like a, a a slow integration is what we're gonna get away from the giant universal, um, the giant universal like inventory that you could like that you pop out anywhere to specific kiosks. Uh, but I don't think it's gonna be that different. It's just like, oh, I'm gonna stop by this kiosk and grab something. And it should still kind of work for the whole landing zone, but as cities expand and as the landing zones start to become compartmentalized, you're going to probably start seeing those whittle down even further to a regional kiosk system. So you have to go to the right regional kiosks or possibly like express kiosks where you can take an item from one region to another region, um, which again leads to more questions like being able to take your gear and have the NPCs ship it to you from other locations. This is, this is the kind of technology that CIG is working on right now that could be implemented for those sorts of things. So, uh, yeah, it's it's cool. It's great. 
uh, I think I think these are all good additions that were that, that don't break immersion, that do add more to the gameplay uh, while making it meaningful. I love the automated loading thing, which they 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 teased in the monthly report and then finally showed it off here. It's like, yes, I love the fact they're doing automated loading. Uh, gosh, it's and this is a good ISC, y'all. This is just a really good ISC. This was uh, I'm, I'm a very happy pupper right now. <laughs> Let's watch Jake. Jake. Let's watch Jared uh, regret his life. Hi. Um, we had a meme image for the end of the show. It's been our thing this season. Uh, this week's was a little too hot for TV. <laughs> so we're going to put this week's image in your hands. Um, I'm going to give you a frame. And you put whatever you want on here. Uh, there you go. And here's my face. Knowing this is a bad idea. That's a mistake. That's a mistake. That's a mistake. That's a mistake. <laughs> Look at this photograph. Yeah, this was the, the Inside Star Citizen last week for that one, which is pretty good. So, yeah. I'm excited. I think this is a good thing. And, and I do want to emphasize because chat was talking about like pretty much every week they say targeted. And the reason why they say targeted is because literally anything can happen. So none of this could make it into I, into, into Star Citizen 3.23. It's probably unlikely at this point that it won't make it in, but it still possibly could not. And this is just the first the first final, I should, because I don't think this is probably the final version, but this is the first version of the final versions. It's like the rough draft of the final version for this system. I don't think we're going to see any sort of major tweaks to the system fundamentally in terms of the idea of the item kiosks or the, um, the, the hangers, just more functionality for them going forward, which is really nice. So as always, I want to know your thoughts in the comments below. Are you excited for cargo? Are you uh, worried about other things? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And like I always say, hope to see you someday in the black.